before we see git in action, let's uh, try to understand what we mean when we talk about git as being a distributed version control. In any version control system, there has to be some sort of storage mechanism, and it's going to be on a disk somewhere where you're storing all of your system you've got under con version control. And usually that's going to include the history of all the changes that you made, who made those changes, where those uh, changes were made in the file structure, um, how maybe there was a dependency between this change before this other change, and, and so forth. Now the difference between Git and so many others uh, version controls previously is that uh, programs like CVS and uh, Subversion kept one location for, for this repository. And so everyone had to send their stuff to this repository from wherever they were whenever you got information you got it from this one location whenever you changed anything it, it always went to this location when it, whenever you were looking for updates from other people it went to this location and maybe that was on some remote server somewhere but you had to connect to it and everyone else had to connect to it and that was the only storage space available there was no local uh, mechanism but with with git and maybe some other um, distributed version control systems like mercurial or bazaar or whatever you want the the difference is now we have not just one centralized repository but we have a number of them distributed throughout the world and there's going to be usually some sort of network in between these repositories and so that means that user one is doing all of his or her commits to one repository and user two is doing his or her commits to a separate repository and user three is doing theirs and user <coughs> four, excuse me, is doing theirs. And notice now that there's no interaction, at least by default, between all of these repositories. You have to do some sort of explicit mechanism where user one can share with user two, or user uh, three can share with user one. And you can get into this weird kind of sharing mechanism here and so you have to be really careful about who shares with whom and what they're sharing and how they interact with each other but this is really powerful because what this means <clears throat> with any sort of team that you're working on is you don't have to have access to this large central repository that you used to have this can be on your own laptop and since it's on your own laptop you don't have to have network connectivity you can be traveling in an airplane and still be able to do version control. You can be on a train going from work to home or vice versa. Still have access to your version control system. You can be in a dead spot uh, wireless zone and you still have access to your version control. But then when you do have access to these other repositories you can have these kind of communication go on. And so this is what we mean when we talk about a distributed version control system and and that there is local access and there are remote access as opposed to there is the access with our CVS and Subversion repositories. Uh, so this is really nice. You can do whatever you want in your repository. You can get your code exactly the way you want it to. You can maybe get some stuff from some other people and when you're ready to share you push it out or, or they pull it <clears throat> from you and you get to do that kind of sharing when you're ready and you don't um, have other people mess up your code until you're you're ready for them to to touch your code so this is the distributed nature and of, of uh, the git version control system that that we're using and uh, that will um, be 
one of the reasons why why we use it in this class because I'll have mine as the teacher and you'll have each of yours as students and what should happen is you can interact with my repository but there shouldn't be interactions between your repositories and, and so it's a it's a nice way for me to check what you're doing grab what you you have and get the latest information out to you get your latest commits and and grade you appropriately so it's a a, a very nice fit that way now what can happen with with git is you can emulate this kind of behavior if you want so in, in a certain sense uh, github is kind of like this you can have one repository that everyone sends their information to uh, and and it's a centralized location the difference between github uh, and CVS and Subversion is this is not the only way to communicate in a Git world. But you do need some way to communicate with other people saying here's where my code is, here's how you can access it, here's where you get it from. And GitHub is, is going to be our mechanism for doing that. So I'll put a question mark here because there's, there's a lot of similarities between GitHub and a centralized location because you do have to do that but that's not the only thing each of you will have your own github account I won't be committing to your repository you won't be committing to my repository um, but but it's a, a central location that we can communicate with each other and so this is a very powerful uh, way to do version control and what we're gonna see now is because of the distributed nature of Git, we need to know a little bit more about how Git works and, and why it works the way it does so that we don't get messed up when we try doing the communication between these different repositories.